so I study urban informatics, and that is the integration of digital technologies into urban spaces. Um, and also, um, similar to that, the emergent forms of organizing and collaboration that are possible with digital technologies. And in particular, um, I'm doing that within a design um, setting. So um, studying designers at the moment um, and the ways in which designers collaborate and the integration between the material objects that designers use and the ways in which they are augmented and changed and distributed with digital technology. Yeah, actually it's pretty interesting. It goes back about seven years. Um, I was really interested in um, looking at what was going on in Japan with mobile technology and that's how I originally met Mimi Ito um, and got acquainted with her work on um, mobiles and youth. And um, I had studied in Japan as an undergrad and I really wanted to go back and, and now, you know, with my, my field in communications, you know, get reacquainted with what was happening in um, Tokyo and in, um, in terms of urban technology. Um, well, I think um, being involved in the digital media and learning community is really important for me as an educator, partially because, you know, when you are teaching graduate students, um, it's really important to be um, knowledgeable about the best practices in terms of how technology is being used in the classroom and what can be accomplished and new um, ways of uh, creating uh, coursework and projects that you weren't aware of because obviously most of us were trained under an earlier system in which you know our classroom experience is very different than what students expect today. So I see it as you know really important to stay involved in the DML community as a faculty member and also um, as I'm continuing to, to study these technologies and the ways that they're you know used in, in urban settings and in work settings um, to be able to help to, to make arguments um, about the um, ways in which, you know, we can develop more nuanced ways of thinking about the role of technology in society. So um, essentially, if you look at, you know, say mainstream press or, or popular notions about technology, I think there are a lot of, you know, mythology and kind of hype. And so it's really important, I think, to have good research that can help us create better um, concepts. And, and in particular, those are concepts that bridge both social and technical um, types of discussions and also both um, technical and spatial. And so there are, you know, usually in, in all of my work, there are um, all three of those dimensions present and it's about creating new terminology and ways of thinking about that so that we can better understand the way that we shape technology and sh technology shapes us. I mean, one of the, I guess, most pervasive ones um, actually is about pervasive technology and ubiquitous computing. And there's this constant phrase of, you know, anytime, anywhere, access to technology, which is usually meant to mean, you know, 24-7 access to the broadband internet. And you'll see it used um, not only in, say, telecom advertisements on TV or cable advertisements. You see it often with, you know, any kind of application that can be accessed around the clock, even um, online banking. Um, and, you know, if you look up the word anytime, anywhere in the way that's been used historically, actually it's, it's been tied to pretty much all, you know, innovations going back hundreds of years. And like even if you look in a popular mechanics magazine, you know, they would sell you some appliance under that anytime, anywhere banner. And so I think, you know, one of the, it's doing us a disservice um, as academics to constantly use that kind of language, and, and we do. Um, and I think that you know, if you haven't studied you know mobile technology or situated spatial, you know contextual um, ways in which technology and you know uh, people use technology, you have you often tend to revert to that as a default. And it's really important to um, again develop a more nuanced understanding of you know when are people actually engaged with technology? Where are the you know there are mobile dead zones? There's um, you know, Wi-Fi infrastructure that, you know, shapes, you know, gives new kinds of affordances and freedoms, but at the same time, those are not um, pervasive or ubiquitous. There are, you know, there are times in which you may want to disconnect. And so I think that that, um, the language of any time, anywhere is not really very helpful in developing a nuanced understanding of the, the spatial and contextual ways in which we actually behave as people. Actually, you know, it, it's been a really delightful week and, and a really fun week and also intellectually really 
stimulating and peer in terms of like camaraderie and peer building really important. Um, I was not sure whether I would be able to integrate well with the other DML scholars because um, I you know don't come from an education background and I'm not working specifically in say K through 12 schools although I, I'm looking at you know how design students are educated in um, undergraduate gra graduate programs um, and it's been um, I would say I've had so much more in common with everyone than I would have thought and in, in particular you know specific methodologies and specific theories um, and also just the, the way in which people really treated each other with respect and, and you know, openness. So I, I think that because it was a very small and exclusive peer group of only 12 people, that led to a more, you know, a better feeling of intimacy and being able to get, get um, to know each other better. And so it's been a really positive experience. Um, I mean, the mentoring that was provided on the, the first day that we had small group meetings, in my case, um, and you know the, the particular mentor that I was working with in our small group discussion was so incredibly insightful and thoughtful and she took the time to take each of us aside for five or ten minutes and give us individual feedback and then we had a more broad discussion and she asked us the most important question which is you know what are you really up against when you're doing your work like who are you trying to argue against or where are the alternative you know visions that are you know competing with your ideas and so and I think that's probably the most important question that anyone needs to answer if they're going to be doing research and developing their own opinions. So that um, mentoring session by far stands out as the highlight of the week um, and uh, she also sent us very very detailed feedback on our papers um, today so there was a cont continuity between the beginning of the week when we met and the end of the week um, in terms of the amount of in contact that we got with the mentor. Um, so that really stands out as the highlight. Um, I guess I'm a compulsive application sender, so if I see an opportunity, and in particular for, for intimate summer workshops, um, I found that going back over the last seven years, the most useful periods of time for me have always been summer workshops. So starting back in summer 2003 with um, you know web shop at the University of Maryland or Oxford Internet Institute or the values and design there have been all of these great opportunities just to ha hang out for a week intensively with you know anywhere from 20 to 30 other scholars and you know you you always get um, such you know just such a different feeling than say taking courses or being on your own writing your dissertation so you know I, I saw it I'm not sure how I which listserv I learned about it through, but I imagine it was distributed through the, you know, STS listserv and the um, Association of Internet Researchers, and I've followed Mimi Ito's work, you know, for going back quite a while, so I think I, I found out about it through, you know, those um, venues, and I just thought, well, you know, um, given that I'm doing this new project on design collaboration, and in particular, how do design educators think about, um, their you know role in terms of getting students to work in teams and what kind of scaffolding that they provide for that um, it sounds like a good fit and um, next year I'm planning to work with uh, Judith Gregory at Illinois Institute of Technology on a project which is about teaching ethnography and design um, methods to school kids in Chicago so that is one which is a future project that I knew had a very strong connection to the DML community and so I thought it would be a good opportunity to meet others who have been doing similar types of projects.